All right, so let's finish mixing this beat and let's get it done. All right, what's good family? Welcome to part three. Like I said last week, this was a, originally a two-part series, but we're just gonna extend it out to a three-part series. I want you to get the most out of this. If you haven't seen part one or part two, I'll leave a link in the description for that as well. But go ahead and um, you know watch those. If you haven't, just stop the video now and start from the beginning. And you can just break them up. They're about 20 minutes a piece. And um, yeah, so go ahead and watch those and then you'll be back on track to tap into this video here. Today, we're gonna mix up or finish mixing this beat, not mix up, finish mixing this beat. We're gonna be doing some, I'm gonna be showing you some more techniques. And uh, yeah, so let's go get right into it and uh, let's tap in. I'm not gonna, you know, talk too long. I'm just jump right back into the video. We're gonna get right to it. Let's get it. So we did EQing for melodies. Let's go ahead and let's dive into the 808 because the 808 is, to be honest with you, I don't know if you can hear it. It's just, it needs to be tightened up. It needs to be cleaned up a little bit. So we're gonna do that real quick. So, the fast distortion plugin is great. It's cool. You can kind of get, you know, a great. Let me go ahead and solo out this. So, let's turn everything off real quick. Do I have distortion on? You hear the difference? I think it sounds pretty clean, right? Um, with that distortion on. Keep in mind, this 808 already has a lot of grime to it, which, like I said, you pick a good sound, you pick a good 808 that really fits the track, and it just. You really don't have to do a lot. This, this is like, I'm telling you, this is the prime example of, you know, this is exactly what I'd be talking about, right? Anyways, so, fast distortion is great. We can use that, um, but I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use something different. I'm going to be using uh, Sausage Fattener. Um, one of my favorite plugins for 808s and bass lines ever. It's amazing. And it's similar to fast distortion. If you have 40 bucks on you real quick in your pocket or on hand, just get this plugin. It's not that much money and it will change the game, man, for your 808s, for your bass lines, you name it, right? So this is what I usually do. I usually start with the EQ and I usually cut out a lot of the lows, I mean the high ends, uh, depending on the, set, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the track. You know, I might keep a little bit more. Um, I may not. So let's listen to it real quick. So this right here, this frequency is right here. You, you, you're not really hearing that anyways. It, but but it's getting in the way. It's in the way of the hi-hats. It's in the way of the melodies. So it's just in the way, right? So we cut that stuff out. Not too much, but just enough to give us, you know, keep the 808 and uh, kind of give us some more space in this area for hi-hats, for melodies, even vocals. They're going to sit in that range, give or take, you know, somewhat, right? So boom, we got that. And then that's the EQ. Now we're going to throw on this distortion plugin and we're going to mess with some of this. There's only three knobs and we're just going to play with it until we kind of get a sound we want. So. I like that. I like that. I like the way that sounds. I think it sounds clean. Clean. Let's hear it all together. Yeah. This sounds clean. I like the 808. I like the way it sounds. Now, one thing I want to do with the 808 and the kick, I want to sidechain those. So, what we can do is just click on the kick, right click on the 808, sidechain to this track, boom, right? Then the 808, we're going to go into the 808, um, you know, channel rack and add a fruity limiter real quick. Let's see where that's at. Boom. And this is all stock. This fruity limiter is stock, okay? Simply go to the comp compression side. By the side chain side, click kick, boom. And then just, we're just going to play it. I love the fruity limiter because it shows you what's going on. And I'm a visual person. Um, 
you know, and it, it helps a lot to to under to help me understand what the you know frequencies are doing, what's really going on. Now, I will say, don't you know use don't use this as a cru- like don't don't get caught up on what everything looks like, right? You really want it to sound good, right? You don't want this to be a crutch to your production. You want it to be helpful to you, so you can see what's going on and what you're doing. But ultimately, you want to hear what's going on so that you can make accurate decisions based off of what's being heard not what's being seen all right so let's just play it real quick and we're going to start making some adjustments what i usually adjust off rip is the ratio uh the attack uh, a little bit of the, of the release i don't mess with the knee like that really um and then the threshold we definitely have to you know adjust that as well and we'll just play it and we'll adjust <laughs> I think that sounds pretty good as you can tell from the limiter what it's doing is you know it's that kick right there is that's the kick right that little joint right there it's kicking down or hitting down in from the 808 basically it's turning off that 808 just just to that level of for the threshold where the threshold is at right so it's not gonna go lower than that so you're still gonna get some of that bass sound but you're not gonna get the you know now, whole thing's not gonna cut off, right? Just certain a certain level is gonna cut off or or duck down so the kick can hit, right? So that is the kick hit right there. The release is gonna determine how long that kick, how long the 808 is gonna stay down, right? And then the attack's gonna determine, you know, how quickly the 808's gonna duck. So if the attack's at zero, it's gonna duck as soon as it hit the kick hits, right? If it's a little bit, you know, up, if we go up a little bit, then it's gonna kind of have a delay to it to when the 808 will duck down. This works good for like vocals right you don't want too much compression on your vocals so that's why you have the attack it's not like a zero maybe you kind of go up a little bit it kind of creates a natural feel for the vocals to add some compression so basically if you say you you know the artist yells it's not going to just chop off their voice it's going to kind of slowly bring their volume down it's, it's more of a natural feel that's a little side note but that's kind of what's going on here of course the ratio and the threshold is going to determine you know the, it's kind of the big players in the game the ratio is determining how you know how much it's gonna you know go you know push down that 808 that threshold is gonna determine when you know what i'm saying like up at this point like when it reaches this level go and start cutting down the volume right so that's what's going on that's kind of a you know a, a quick overview of you know just adding side chain i did a quick side chain i may come back to it and adjust some things tweak some things uh, just like the rest of the stuff, right? So mixing is not just a one and done type thing, right? As you can tell. Now, what I want to do real quick before we even get into the drums, because there's not too much stuff that has to be done with the drums. Um, some things, but not nothing crazy, really, to be honest with you. Uh, it's more of sound design and just, just leveling things out. It's not too much that has to be done. So what I want to do real quick is I want to mess around with some stereo separation, mess around with that, you know, aspect of the mix. That's the next step we want to talk about. So we did EQ, we did you know, the 808, we mixed a little bit of that. Uh, or sorry, we did leveling first, then we did EQ, and then we did 808 sidechain. And now I want to mess around with some of the stereo separation, things like that, um, you know, of the aspect of the mix. So let's tap into that real quick. So I want to add some stereo separation. I want to move some things left and right, um, even open some things up. So even like, so panning left and right and then opening some things up, I want to do that, right? So one thing I, I'll tell you right now, We've got two synths going on, right? Immediately, I'm like, look, they're sharing, they're sharing a lot of frequencies already, right? So you, the, the, the rule of thumb is you find the frequencies that are sharing a lot of with each other, and you want to kind of break them up a little bit, right? So they can have their own space in the mix. This one, synth one, synth two, 
they're sharing spaces, right? There is some lower frequencies in this one versus this one, right? But that's okay. We want to just break them up a little bit, right? So I want to take this higher one, pan it to the left. Take this lower one, pan it to the right. Just a little bit, not fully, right? But just a little bit to get some more space. You know what I'm saying? This also creates more space for other melodies, right? Sounds good so far, right? Now, one thing I might want to do too as well is add some stereo separation. So we, we, we separated this by panning them, but I want to do some separation with different with diff, with um, some other melodies. And this is kind of more uh, of, of just a personal preference. When I'm mixing a beat or making a beat, this is usually when I do this. I usually add some stereo separation to certain sounds, certain melodies, so to create a certain feel. Say say I have like a melody, I kind of want it to kind of be a little more, you know, a little bigger and, and, and kind of like separate through the mix and not like, you know, I kind of want it to be more airy, you know what I'm saying? That's when I'll do that, right? So I kind of want to implement that here. I'm going to find one of the melodies that I really feel like can be really, like, have some stereo separation and, um, you know, do that. Per perfect. This is thin. I it's perfect. So what I want to do, just grab it, and I want to go maybe like 50%. On that, and it kind of just separates. It. It's on both sides. It's kind of like it's not really in the middle anymore. It's kind of like that. You know what I mean? It's kind of opened up. Um, I don't know what I'm doing with my hands, but I'm trying to explain the best I can. So yeah, we did that. Let's let's hear it all together. Love it. That's clean. I like the way that sounds. Um, play around with this. Have fun with stereo separation. Have fun with uh, the panning. Um, I don't think there's rules to it. I, I think you can have fun with panning things and making things, you know, on the left ear or the right ear or kind of in the middle or like painting them out a little bit. It kind of creates some more openness. So let me just keep going on to um, the perks and um, open hi hats and all that good stuff. And let's see what we can pan. Or if not, then we'll just keep going.
So this sounds pretty good so far. This is kind of where it gets tricky. I, I, I to be honest, to be hundred percent honest with you, I, I just kept messing around with them until I felt like it was right. You know what I'm saying? So I panned them a little bit. I felt like the bell sat really good on the right hand side, just a little bit more. The open eye hat, this louder one right here. I felt like it just was kind of annoying, and it just needed to be to the left a little bit. Uh, it was a little too loud, um, but I felt like that needed to go there. Um, the open hat was perfect on this right-hand side to kind of complement that, right? Hi-hat right down the middle, give or take. And then we get the bell. So this is kind of what it sounds like so far. All right, so that's the panning. That's what I would do for panning. Next thing I want to talk about is effects. I want to add some effects. Some of these melodies or most of these melodies, I don't really want to touch them, but if you wanted to add effects, add some things, I typically would do that as I'm making the beat because that goes into what that actual melody is or the sound actually is. But for this case scenario, if you want to add some some reverb or something, or say you're mixing somebody else's project, right? And you want to add some reverb and stuff like that. This is where I would do that or delay stuff like that. So biggest thing to add a reverb, delay all those effects. I, really, bro? My bad. Cars are driving in the background. But the biggest thing we're adding reverb and delay, um, or the biggest sections I would add reverb and delay is the drums, right? So open hat, stuff like that. They sound so flat without them. They sound really like stiff. With the reverb, it kind of gives them that, you know, that smoothness to them. Oh, that sounds so much better. I know you probably can't hear that at well, but sounds great. This one too, so throw reverb on that as well. It sounds good. See how clean that sounds? That sounds amazing now. With that reverb, it changes the game. So, Last thing I want to do to kind of finish this thing off is we got to do our buses. We, we got the buses, you know, on our, our mixer track for a reason that, you know, not just to level out the overall sounds of each, the, the melody and the drum, but also to glue them together. Let's tap in. Let's do the melody first. So. Very easy. Go right into the mixer for the melody bus. Go to the, the, um, Mixer bus. We already have the limiter on there. If you already have the preset, um, you know, you should already have the preset. It's going to have the limiter on it right here. Go to the compressor right here. Boom. Simple stuff here. All we're going to do is play it. And it's the same thing as when we did the 808. We're just going to play it. We want to kind of compress this thing a little bit. So go to the ratio, the threshold. So the key to this, and I'm going to try to explain the best way I can, is you want to get those melodies kind of, you, you, you want the dynamic to be kind of, you want to kind of compress them a little bit. You don't want them to be, the dynamic range to be all over the place, like high, low, high, low, especially with these, these plucks, these, you know, arpeggio sound, dun, 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 dun. you kind of want to level them out a little bit. And as you can see, what we're doing is we're kind of making it a cleaner you know, it's, it's, it's kind of blending them together and creating a more collective sound with all the melodies, right? So let's go ahead and let's do the same thing with this one. This one is, um, we don't want to do too much compression because we don't want to get, you know, kill, kill, the, kill the vibes. But anyways. So we do that. Oh, 
Oh yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good. Let's hear it all together. Yo, crazy. The beat is crazy. That is the mixing. That is basically step by step how I would mix a beat. Um, like I said, I kind of tried to you know make it organized. I, to be real with you, I kind of go. I'm all. I jump all around the place and just all, all around and just mix and mix and do different things. But I wanted to create a system for you. That way you can understand it, comprehend it, and uh, really implement it in your beats and start mixing better and um, making better beats, bro. Like this is this is something I wish I really had when I started making music because I feel like it was overcomplicated. The process was just ridiculous. Like it was just too much going on, adding this, adding that, adding this, do this, do this, too much. This is much simpler, much easier, and I hope it was a benefit to you to check out this mini course that I put together. Like I said before, go ahead and get the reference mix, get this beat mixed down. I'm gonna probably spend another 30, 45 minutes mixing this down so you can get a really, you know, a really good sound and uh, listen to this in your studio, listen to this in your car and whatnot, and so you can have a great reference. Hope all this was beneficial, like I said before. Other than that, I will see you in the next video. Peace.